The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN Wednesday morning, 9.06 a.m. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading, and we got markets in the red to kick things off. The S&P futures right now, negative by 13 points, trading at 46.65. You got the Dow negative by 47 points, 36,163. NASDAQ 100 in the red by 92 points, 16,120. And you get the Russell negative by seven this morning. We got a hot CPI number. That's driving some of the action this morning. When you look at commodities, you got crude up six pennies at 84.21. We'll be talking to our man, Teddy Kegstat from forex-trading-unlock.com at 40 past the hour. We'll be talking a little bit of Forex. We'll be talking some commodities, including crude as well. How about gold this morning? Catching a bit on that CPI data. Up $24 right now, about at 1854.10. You see the spike there on gold at 830, quite the spike indeed to higher prices we go. Notes and bonds, you're talking about lower prices and higher yields, a little bit uh, of volatility there. You're talking about pretty low yields on the 10-year still. We're talking about 1.48% right now. The yield on the 10-year, we're negative by 15 ticks at 131.12. The 30-year is negative 8 ticks at 163.15. We jump over to the volatility index. Elevated levels in the VIX uh, on a continual basis. When you look where we were last week, 1473, we came into Friday at about 15. The VIX rising to 1835. All things considered, you get the market sitting right near all-time highs right now. We've had a little bit of a pullback, but keep your eye on that VIX. That is an elevated VIX for the type of market we have had. Negative prices yesterday, but nothing too crazy for a VIX pushing above 18 right now at 18.35. All right, let's get right into the CPI data this morning. Out at 8.30, inflation in U.S. builds with biggest gain in prices since 1990. That's the headline over at Bloomberg. CPI jumping 6.2% in October from a year ago. In a broad advance, the core measure of consumer prices increased by the most since 1991. I keep talking about it. Remarkable when you think about the acceleration the core numbers are having <clears throat> Excuse me, folks, still dealing with a little bit of a cold. Remarkable the acceleration the core prices are having. When you think about energy and food, the rapid increase that energy and food is having on top of it. So you have a record number since 1991 on the core measure and the other indicators that they pull out of that number to get the core number are rapid as well. So the headline number is 6.2%. You see it on a chart, man. Some big numbers. CPI is in the black. The core number is in the pink there. You see the spike just off the charts in a big way. The highest number since 1990 uh, on that indicator. And uh, getting into... Here we go. Excluding volatile food and energy components, the core inflation rose 0.6% from the prior month and 4.2% from a year earlier. I mean, 0.6% on a monthly basis. Things were already on fire last month. They're just increasing on almost record numbers. You're talking about 1991. Shelter costs, which are considered to be a more structural component of the CPI, make up about a third of the overall index, rising 0.5%. 5% in October, the most in four months as higher rents and home prices feed into the data. The cost of hotel stays increased. When you look at it, though, folks, I mean, you're talking about shelter costs. That is not transitory. OK, when you talk about rent prices, et cetera, rising 0.5% in the month, when you combine all those, that's a third of the overall index through higher prices. New cars, 1.4% last month as the global shortage of semiconductors continues to limit inventories and drive up costs. Used vehicle prices jump 2.5%. 5% uh, when they take a look at some of the commentary in terms of CEOs out there. You have McDonald's talking about, we haven't seen, I'll say, any more resistance to our price increases than we've seen historically. 
They're jacking up prices, folks, and everybody's okay with it because they know that prices are rising, rents are rising, food costs are rising, wages are rising across the board. Uh, that was McDonald's. Uh, Ch Chipotle, we feel very comfortable that any inflation that is affecting our margin today, we have the ability to offset it. I mean, they're telling you, folks, Procter & Gamble, PG, we've now announced pricing in 9 out of 10 categories, so very broad-based. It's coming, folks. It's already here. It's not coming in a big way. So that's the number this morning. Uh, higher prices across the board. It seems like every single time we get those numbers, it's almost a record print across the board. But nonetheless, here we are, and you're seeing that impact, um, especially in that gold contract spike in a big way. Gold, let's check it out, it's sitting up about 24 bucks at 1854. All right, where do we go to next? We got a lot of companies with earnings. We got a Rivian going public today with their electric trucks. Uh, and speaking of electric, let's jump over to Tesla. This one's a wild one, folks. Uh, you might see a 900 handle on Tesla after trading at almost 1,200 on Monday. You talk about a wipeout, folks. You're talking about a wipeout to the tune of $200 billion in market cap. There it is. Tesla shares fall for a fourth day after a $200 billion wipeout. And I think we're going to be flirting with under a $1 trillion valuation for that company on the open right now with it pushing to negative uh, prices on the open. As they say, you're down about 1.6% in the pre-market today. Three-day slide that erased more than $200 billion in value. Uh, plunged nearly 17% since Thursday's close. Two worst days of selling since September of 2020. I'd be careful of this one, folks, in a big way. And there's the market cap valuation of Tesla. You see the wipeout it's had, $200 billion in just a few days. That's real money, folks. That's money that was sitting in people's accounts. Uh, it's not real money until you close out that trade. That's the thing that you always want to keep your eye on. Uh, Elon's brother, <coughs> he closed out his trade, at least 10 to 15 percent of it, the day before Elon pulled Twitter about selling 10 percent of his stake. I was talking about it on Monday. I was surprised that you didn't have a real sell-off on Monday, considering you had the CEO of the company talking about dumping 10 percent of the equity. That should be an alarm in, in many ways. The news comes out yesterday that you had Elon's brother is a board member of Tesla, sold, uh, I think it was like 280,000 shares or something like that. I'll have to get the number exactly. It was 10 to 15% of his position. It was a $110 million sale. His sale price, $1,229. To show you what a great exit that was of that position, there you are on the chart, folks. You were there for about two days, and uh, he got some great executions to get off at 12.29 for the average print to sell 110 million dollars of Tesla shares. With the type of volume that this equity does, probably didn't have too hard of a problem getting rid of those shares. With the type of volume that Tesla does on a daily basis, but not a coincidence, folks, that you have Elon's brother selling at 12.29. He's got plenty of money. OK, you don't need to sell if you think this is undervalued. Pay attention when you got the people running the company, the two brothers. All right. Both of them selling shares at twelve twenty nine. The market paid attention yesterday. They said, you know what? Uh, Elon's no fool. His brother's no fool. They were teaming up. They knew what was going on. They were making a, an educated guess that maybe valuations a little lofty at twelve twenty nine at one point two trillion dollars for this company. Yes, it's an outstanding company, folks. It's going to be around, but they got some time to go. Maybe where they start achieving a one point two to one point five trillion dollar valuation, and you're going to open today down another twenty dollars approximately, trading at one thousand and five dollars on Tesla. We'll see where the market goes on the open, though, folks. Yesterday, yesterday, the open not kind to of Tesla. Check out the action. This is a fifteen minute chart. By ten a.m. yesterday, you had lost about one hundred and fifty dollars in the share price of Tesla. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back after the break. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. 
First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps negative by 17 right now. All the markets in the red as we kick off Wednesday trading. Let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hinks. Every trading day, folks, noon Eastern time, TD Ameritrade Network, live on Tiger TV, fast market. Kevin Hinks, Tom White, the team at TD Ameritrade Network, breaking down the day's market action, walking you through hypothetical trade setups, talking about that market action. Kevin Hinks, we got a little bit of a hot CPI number. Seems like that's par for the course, though, these days. Good morning. Good morning, Tommy. Yeah, that CPI number was hot, but but if you look at the numbers, Tommy, it's all energy. It's if you take out, you know, not not take out, but used cars and trucks up two and a half percent, new vehicles up one point four percent. Besides that, Tommy, every big number is energy. I'll go through it. Energy in general up four point eight percent. Energy commodities six point two percent. Gasoline. Uh, Fuel all types, sorry, 6.1. Here we go. Fuel oil, Tommy, 12.3%. Energy services, 3%. Electricity, 1.8%. Utility pipes, gas service, 6.6%. .6. So the majority, the lion's share of this hot number in terms of CPI, it's all energy, Tommy. And so who isn't aware that energy prices are higher, right? So I, I get that this number is coming to fruition but it shouldn't really shock anybody yeah i'm almost getting used to kevin even even the prints when i read them you know highest number since and and then yep. they go back three decades almost this one 1990 even on the core number i saw over there um so not too surprising the market no, no real reaction s and p's you know eight points away maybe where we were uh coming into that number we have all the markets in the red right now but man it's been quite a run to higher price is across the board. Uh, you have a VIX that's somewhat elevated, Kevin. Uh, above 18 last time I checked. Yeah, we're sitting at 18.37. Quite a rise from the 14.37 of, of less than a week ago. What do you see in that VIX, Kevin? Uh, you know, we have had a market pullback, but nothing too substantial, man. You got the, the S&Ps at 4,663 points right now, and the VIX has just been steadily climbing to 18.37 right now. Do you, do you see anything going on there? Maybe a little cautionary tale of premium priced into that market? 
Yeah, I think some uncertainty has crept into the overall market near at or near all time highs. I think Elon Musk, his <laughs> statements over the weekend has have caused Tesla to correct. Remember, that's part of the S and P. That's yes. probably driving some of it. Uh, there's a couple, you know, PayPal yesterday. That hurt the whole payment space. Visa, Mastercard, Square, all you know, all those names were soft on on PayPal's miss. So yeah, there there there's a little bit of uncertainty creeping into this market at the all time highs in the VIX, sitting just around eighteen. You know, it's not, it's barely even up today. So you know, this market is dealing with a little higher yields, but one four seven on the ten year is not scary. What is significant in terms of yield, Tommy, is the consistent flattening of the yield curve. That is affecting financials now more than just higher yields. I mean, a 147 on the tenure, that doesn't surprise, that that doesn't scare anybody. But the flattening yield curve is affecting some of the financials, Tommy. So, yeah, there's things out there that are causing a little bit of uncertainty, not catastrophic uncertainty, just a little bit of choppiness up here around the highs. Yeah, pretty cool, all the variables going on. Like you talk about, man, tenure, man, under back under 1.5%, even rising a bit today. Uh, the Tesla story, that's going to be a wild one as we go forward and see where the, the buying and the selling kind of finds a true demand point. Of course, Elon had himself quite a weekend on Twitter. Uh, news out yesterday, right, that his brother was selling some of his position maybe a day prior. Uh, the Musk brothers d getting rid of some of their position at that, putting a little bit of scare in Tesla shares. Interesting, I hadn't really factored in. Yeah, quite an impact when you have a 200 billion market cap wipeout um, for that company as one of the biggest companies in the S&P 500 for sure. Uh, we go on from there, Kevin. We had a lot of Fed talk uh, already kicking off this week. Of course, the discussion already beginning about Chairman Powell, whether he'll be yeah. in that chair going forward. Um, what do you kind of take on that, Kevin? Do you see any type of volatility if he does get replaced? I know I'm asking a big, big, you know, picture questions <laughs> here. Um, but the market pretty calm with, with even the Chairman Powell. It looks like potentially, you know, and it's all up in the air right now, but I'd say more so than like last week or a week ago that, that he might have some competition for that job at a pretty volatile time right now in the market. Tommy, I believe that Jerome Powell is the most effective Fed chair in my professional career, which has been since the early 80s. He's done what I think is the best job at answering every problem that has popped up in this economy, including a 100-year pandemic. Now, that being said, I believe that this administration has two decisions that they make. They either make no decision or they make the wrong decision. So their possibility that they could make the wrong decision and choose someone like Lael Brainerd is certainly in the cards, Tommy. Should they? No. Jerome Powell should remain the Fed chair. He's a completely effective in his job. Yeah, and I, you know, it'd be tough to argue against anything you said right now with, you know, the way the market has behaved, the way the market's behaved, even as they start to uh, taper some of the asset purchases, man, just taking it in stride, which is remarkable when you think about the billions of dollars involved. Uh, and I'm just, I'm just amazed at just the low volatility in this market with the potential to have a new Fed chair, which, which is pretty meaningful in, in the context of everything going Absolutely. on. Absolutely. Yeah, so we'll see where that goes. Uh, we got earnings, Kevin, man. We got stocks moving today already uh, with everything going on. What are you guys going to be talking about on Fast Market coming up at noon today? So we have a great show lined up today. First and foremost, we'll look at Affirm, the buy now, pay later company. And you should know that based on if you own a Peloton, that's who you're probably ma making your monthly payment to is Affirm. And then, obviously, the high-profile name of the week is Disney. And, that, and it's everything like Folio will do a presentation on Disney. And then we'll follow that up with a little um, flow to the show, which means when we're covering Disney, the streamer, why not cover the big streamer? And that is Netflix. So affirm Disney and Netflix today on Fast Market, Tommy. I love it, man. Pretty remarkable. I was talking about on my show yesterday, uh, two years ago is when Disney launched. Uh, they talk about a mainstay in the streaming platform arena, man. And only two years ago, they didn't even exist. Sometimes timing in life, man, can be everything. They launched their service in November. The pandemic begins in February and March. The whole world shuts down. Uh, talk about being timed right for people being stuck at home. Disney, though, they've been in, uh, and we have some Disney folks in my newsletter, quite a consolidation this thing's been in, man, going back to the better part of really 
almost a year ago. You had an acceleration in last December up to a high of 179. We're trading right now at 175 after being a 203. And Netflix, man, the run this thing has had. I was reading an article today talking about gaming. Uh, maybe they're going to be uh, getting into gaming they've talked about and how that may change things. Uh, might be the next leg up, of course. They're going to have to spend some capital potentially. But Netflix, man, the run to 690. They're trading at 656. Six, yeah, 652 right now. Quite a run for Netflix. And a firm. It seems like that's the next way that everybody's going to get into debt, Kevin. I kid. But buy, buy now, pay later. Uh, it's it's a trend, man. And a firm capitalizing. They're doing business with Amazon, catching a big bid. We'll look forward to the program, Kevin. We appreciate the conversation and the education as always. We'll be watching at noon Eastern time today. Always a pleasure, Tommy. Thanks for having me on. Always a pleasure as well, Kevin. Take care, folks. Tune in, folks. Every trading day, 12 noon Eastern time, you heard it. They're going to be talking about a firm, and we'll jump to Disney, because Disney, as he said, the main event of the week, Disney, quite the run from last October of 120. The world figures out we have vaccines, and we're going to open back up. You're up to 203, but guess what? Disney parks, movie theaters, not quite open to the tune that they're looking for just yet. Disney trading at 174. We'll be right back, folks, for the open. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other tigers and tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational web webinars for all trading levels. And make sure you check out Tiger TV for free on TFNN.com or TFNN's YouTube channel for live financial content from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern on market days. Stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com.
Welcome back, folks. We got markets open, markets in the red to kick things off. You're looking at an S&P right now, coming right down to the lows we had pre-market last night at about midnight Eastern time. S&P is negative by 16 points, 46.61. Uh, you see the sell-off yesterday morning, right? Quite an accelerated sell-off from 4,700. You trade down intraday to about 46.65 yesterday. We're just below those levels right now, trading at 46.62. NASDAQ 100 down about 127 points. We jump over to Tesla. Where are we going? Down 1.5%. Let's check it out. Are we below 1 trillion? Where are we at? Come on, keep up. 1.009007. Tesla at 1,003. Uh, down 1.8% 1 continuing. Uh, be careful of Tesla, folks. Catching a bid. You want to see the run this thing has had. You put it on a daily. We were just trading at 800 bucks on October 12th. To put that in context, folks, you're still up 25% on this equity in less than a month at this price. Did you hear that? Still up 25% in less than a month at this price. Uh, puts in context kind of the run this has had, let alone if you back things up just to May, you're talking about less than five or six months or so, and you're almost a double bagger from those lows we had back in May. Remarkable action. S&P is negative by four. You got the Dow. Only negative by three right now. Check out that pop. The Dow catching a bit on the open, man. Watch out. 36,208. Now positive. The Dow. Uh, remarkable strength continuing. All right. What else we got going on? We got Rivian going public today. Not public just yet. R-I-V-N is going to be their symbol. Talking about electric vehicles. Rivian. Uh, $78 a share. They're going to be pricing that in. I think that values the company at about $66.8 billion. Something like that. They're going to raise about $12 billion in the biggest initial public offering of the year. I think it's the sixth biggest IPO ever is what I saw in there. Yes, it is. Sixth largest US, US IPO ever. Amazon, they own about 20% of that company. Not about. I think it's 20% of that company that they own. Uh, Amazon catching quite a bid yesterday. Some of that having to do with Rivian because they kept pricing up the bid there in terms of what Rivian is going to. Uh, but uh, our man Dan in the Tigers there was talking about earlier. I mean, you had Amazon add in $45 billion almost a market cap yesterday. Meanwhile, their ownership of Rivian only translating to about 15 to $20 billion. Uh, maybe that's the Bezos premium going on. Maybe that's just a little bit of a safe haven in Amazon as you have a little bit of slide in the market. I mean, Amazon, this thing's been in quite a consolidation, folks. Amazon, for the better part of 16 months, has been chopping around between 3000 and 3500 You got above that price point when Jazzy took over as CEO to 3773 They come out with their earnings in July. Costs on the rise. You trade lower. You come out with the earnings back in October. They tell the world they might not even make a profit in the final quarter of the year, which is the holiday season. And we're dramatically above there, putting this back on a daily to see the run we had. You just traded from 3,300 to almost 3,600 on Amazon. Now, the one thing I'll say, folks, I don't get too caught up. I have Amazon in my retirement account, okay? I don't get too caught up on the earnings front on Amazon. Number one, you got AWS. The margins are through the roof. That business is going nowhere. They are a leader. They're going to stay a leader in the cloud business for some time. When you think about their competitors, right, Amazon is leaps and bounds ahead of the likes of, in my opinion, Walmart, Target, and I even have some Walmart and Target in my retirement accounts, okay, folks? They have appreciation possibilities as well. But there's nobody that gets it done like Amazon in terms of the level of service they have, right? You're ordering it. You can track where the delivery truck is, right? They tell you it's 10 stops away. Look for the truck. That stuff is not happening right now for Walmart, for Target. So if Amazon has to do away with all of their profits just to spend money to provide the level of service that we expect, what do you think is going to happen with a company like Walmart and Target where they're trying to play catch up? Right? They're trying to play catch up with a company like Amazon for their delivery services, et cetera. And at the same time, you have Amazon basically using all the money that they're making from AWS and their retail sector uh, to wipe away the profits just to compete because they're investing in capital. And, and that's human capital, too, uh, that they're investing in. Keep that in mind, because eventually Amazon, at least their track record has a great track record of investing in capital that pays dividends in the future. Um, they're not wasting that money. The money that they have spent in terms of building out their delivery procedures, 
uh, unmatched. I mean, and that's how they that's how he became the richest man in the world. Not sure if he's the richest man in the world right now. He might be the richest man in the world again with the way Tesla is trading over the last couple of days. Nonetheless, Amazon backing off a bit down 0 0.8 point eight tenths percent, we'll call it, uh, giving back some of those gains. You were up 2.9% at one point yesterday. Almost 3% Amazon shares were up as uh, maybe everybody that was dumping Tesla shares yesterday buying some Amazon shares. All right, jumping around, what else we got going on? Kevin talked about it. The main event of the week potentially for earnings is Disney today. Uh, we got some earnings last night as well, though. DoorDash, an interesting one. They are buying uh, one of their competitors for eight billion dollars DoorDash they come out with their numbers last night you trade higher to 241 you're giving back some of those gains to 216 putting this thing on a daily we challenged the upper boundary we had in September you're back a little bit to 215 DoorDash off the lows we had of 110 back in May now interesting that uh, Uber which sometimes will be hit by that not really getting hit by it maybe actually trading lower on the news that they are getting uh, a beefed up competitor in the eat space as doordash buying one of their competitors uh for eight billion dollars uber right now down 1.9 percent let's see how disney's trading right now ahead of their earnings up about two tenths percent trading at 175.44 all right what else we got going down the line how about zillow uh, working through the congestion of their homes. They're dumping 2,000 homes as the flipping business ends, selling that to Pretium Partners. Uh, they're the second biggest owner of individual family homes, I believe. Yes, uh, second largest single family landlord behind Invitation Homes. They own 70,000 rental houses in the US, so they're gonna up that number by 2,000. Uh, Pretium has long been committed to providing quality housing options for residents at a time when move-in ready homes are in short supply. We continue to invest in communities and improve access to housing throughout the US. Not a bad business to be in when rents are going through the roof right now. I'm sure they got quite a haircut from whatever Tesla paid, ah, excuse me, whatever Zillow paid. The company plans to take a write down. This is Zillow of much as 569 million, reducing the workforce by 25% as they wind down that business. Jumping over to Zillow shares today, down eight tenths percent. Now you wanna go long-term on this equity? Can't go wrong, potentially adding a little bit here, folks. You know, you are right back to the highs we had prior to covid remarkable think about that a company like zillow okay if you said to yourself with everything that happened in the home market right think about everything that's happened in the home market over the last almost two years we're going back to february of 2020 prior to the pandemic now test uh zillow i keep saying tesla zillow announced their numbers in february 2020 you spike higher you give back all of the gains that's atrocious that this company is trading at the same price that it's trading at in february of last year considering what has happened to the home market i bring it up because long term you know you could at least dabble this thing is showing no strength just yet but you could at least begin a partial position our man basil chapman loves those partial positions and it makes sense um you know, quite a haircut, folks, down from 208, let alone let alone down from 100 bucks uh, just recently as 10 days ago, trading at 66. Um, but Zillow has a future. And to their credit, they realized they made a big mistake. They cut that business. They fired 25 percent of their workforce and they did a complete reset. And their stock price did a complete reset as well. All right, folks, stay tuned. We're going to be talking to our man Teddy Kegstat, talking a little Forex, talking a little bit of oil when we get back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. 
Paper Bytes Investment Newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We get the Dow off 55 points right now. s and is giving back 12 points. NASDAQ off 110. Russell giving back 15 points. Let's jump over to our man, Teddy Kegstat. We talk to Teddy every Wednesday, folks, at 40 past the hour. You can reach Teddy every trading day at forex-trading-unlock.com. Teddy Kegstat, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. How are you today? I'm doing well, man. Uh, so let's kick it off with a little crude, if you don't mind, I'm sure. sure. Uh, crude, it seems like no matter what we give back in this market, Teddy, even yesterday, the moves are just magnificent, man, on both sides. Mm -hmm. But just yesterday alone, taking a look at this chart, man, you go from 82 bucks to almost 85. You got a $3 move to the upside. Mm -hmm. We're pushing recent highs. Uh, I, I, I have an idea of what you might be thinking in this crude market still, but talk to me a little bit about crude right now as we're sitting just above 84 bucks in that sure, market. Sure. Well, I'm still bullish. And you can even see it in the FX markets with this rally in crude where, you know, a couple of weeks ago, I said that crude was back on the table for the currency trade for certain markets. And you can see how today, like, for instance, the Japanese yen had a nice bounce today. Like it's like a balloon yeah. underwater rally going on today. And the low yesterday hit the, almost to the, to the pip, the 50 percent retracement mark from the last major swing low to the recent swing high. So that's nice. a nice little support area. So just technically on that aspect. But the bounce in oil, I think, is the biggest reason why you're seeing that rally there. And you can see it by the U.S. dollar Canada sell off as well. You know, like, I mean, there's a little rally going on with the 30 year Look and the 10 year, which wow. I think that's helping also. Um, but the oil trade, I think, is really driving those markets right now. I think that's why you have the strength in the Aussie that we've been seeing for the past few weeks. And it's every time it tries to sell off, it bounces right when oil does. So I think that that really is on the table right now where as we're buffering these highs, I mean, I can see, I mean, you know, $100 is my price target before the end of the year, you know. So and I think with Thanksgiving coming up in a few weeks, demand is going to go crazy, you know, I mean, and, you know, unless we have supply issues changing and we now have the administration that wants to attack the oil industry again, they follow through with this stuff. We're going to see $100 blow past that in no time. And then I think that's going to support the U.S. dollar yen and also crash the U.S. dollar Canada, making big new lows on the year, I think, probably within the next few weeks to the next month and a half. Yeah, I mean, it's remarkable. We've seen some pretty dramatic pullbacks. And I say dramatic, you know, five bucks, seven mm -hmm. bucks, something like that in this market. But uh, it's, it'd be pretty hard right now. I agree with, with a lot of what you're saying. I mean, it'd be pretty hard to pre 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 
uh, present a bear case in that crude market right now with mm -hmm. everything going on, man, just for the, the points that you made. Um, coming into Thanksgiving, you know, my family might be doing a little bit of traveling. We're going to be driving. Mm -hmm. We're going to be potentially getting, you know, an Airbnb, something like that. And then, you know, doing a four hour drive type uh -huh. Um, holiday season, everybody kind of breaking out still um, in that market, let alone just mm -hmm. the supply chain shortages and the demand that we're seeing across the board in crude uh, sitting at 84 bucks every time. And, and mm -hmm. what's so interesting, I find myself when I look at this market, we've seen some pullbacks. I mean, they've been pretty few and far right. between, but we did just pull back from 85 bucks down to what we make a low of 78 bucks, so a seven dollar pullback. Mm -hmm. And I found myself even when that was happening, Teddy, saying, this is nothing, man. You know, 78 bucks right. from 85 is nothing. As in, we just went from $62 to up to 85 mm -hmm. in a one-way shot in August. Sure. Um, so, yeah, there's <clears> never <throat> really been too much weakness in that market. And just like mm -hmm. that, you come roaring back over the course of three or can four I, days. You can I follow up with one thing on what you're please, saying there go with for the it. oil market? With these dips, you know, one thing that most people – and I'm a futures guy by, you know, origin – there's rollovers in every futures contract. Oil is one contract that rolls over monthly. So when it, whether it's in a bull market or a bear market, you see a difference from the cash to the futures a lot where you'll get a, 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 either a break or a rally. It has to do with settlements of rollover and expiration between the options and the futures contracts a lot of the time. So a lot of these dips that we're seeing now aren't sell-offs necessarily that are happening because of selling. It's happening because of rollovers and expirations over the course of a month, you know. So that's when you see nice. these little dips, and then all of a sudden you see a surge because the, the the premium or discount will always gravitate back towards the cash, you know, because cash doesn't expire, you know. Sure. So and that, and that definitely has a, a big, I think, base right now for the oil for the price of oil. So when you see the dips, I think it has a lot more to do with spread expirations and spreads moving in the short run. So that's why I think the buy dip scenario for oil is very high right now also. Nice. Great point, man. Yeah, those futures markets. We got we all got quite a lesson a year and a half ago about rolling um, on those contracts in a big way. And uh, right. yeah, the, the great point. Uh, let's jump to the yen if we can. You talked about it a little sure. bit. We're getting some moves today. We got some moves in gold uh, as well. We got a hot mm -hmm. CPI number. Um, this morning, uh, a bunch of influences going on in that market, of course. I was chatting with our man Kevin Hanks uh, to kick off the program in terms of autos, mm -hmm. energy in particular in that market. But, yeah, we got the yen up to 113.52 this morning. You're almost a full point above your 80. It's a, it's 80 a big rally this morning. Absolutely. Yeah. What do you talk to me a little bit about the yen here and what we're looking at going forward? Uh, I, I like the low that they set yesterday. I think technically it's good, and, and I think the oil rally is supporting this. Uh, I think that you're going to see the yen break out to a newer high, probably may not be this week, but within the next week or so. You know, you got one thing that you can see that the commodities are driving these currencies, because if you look at like the euro and the pound and the Swiss, they're hanging on these lows, but they're really going nowhere. But the yeah. U.S. dollar yen does what it's trending. No one can you can't look at the yen and not say that this thing is in a bull market right now. You know, so and I do have to say the trend is your friend with this one. And, and, you know, I've been calling for 116 before the end of the year, and I still think that that's very possible. And even 122, I think, is on the table also closer than sooner than later as well, as long as oil keeps on rallying, you know, and especially with the tensions throughout the rest of the world, you know, between the Middle East and Asia and stuff like that. So yeah. I, I really th think that trend is there. I was just going to say, I, I, I agree in the essence that I started off and I was wanting to ask you about the yen. The yen always has an impact on gold, so we love talking about that. Mm -hmm. But it has had some movement, and I'm always getting ready to talk to you on Wednesdays, and I was taking a look at those Forex markets this morning, and as you pointed out, there's kind of just been some chop here, um, mm -hmm. you know, where no, no real huge moves, you know, I mean, the euro, for instance, we're going back to a price that we were almost trading at in September, which is pretty interesting right. in that market. Yeah, compared to some of the mm -hmm. other um, forex markets moving. The Swiss, uh, the Swiss is the European currency that you're getting the most bang for your buck right now. You know, the euro is very tight trade lately. It's not. It's it's a it's a range trader's uh, delight, and it's a it's a trend trader's sure. nightmare. Sure. And the U.S. dollar Swiss. What are we looking at? Ninety one right now from that, and just recently mm -hmm. even right. Well, we we were pushing almost at ninety four. I remember when we first started chatting with you, Teddy. Uh, mm -hmm. That that Swiss. It, it was parity, right? And we are parody. far away from parity. On on the Swiss, mm -hmm. do you ever see that kind of getting back to that that one arena? And geez, I got to go back. I got oh, it up on the chart. Okay, because 2019 we, was the last time we saw that. Yeah, mm -hmm. 
if we have the Fed that starts to ease the tapering um, over the next couple months and starts to stop to support the bond market, then absolutely I could see the U.S. dollar Swiss. I mean, unless the ECB and the Swiss start to raise their rates in front of us and in a drastic way, I can see that the market rate's going to push it. And then, you know, we if we raise rates even slightly, I could see us, are we going to go to parity right away? No, but I could see us trending towards it. And especially if we have an environment where we start to think that, hey, the Fed is going to not just raise rates now, they might do it one, two, three, four times over the next six months, sure. eight months or something like that kind of situation, then I think we could have a race to parity. I can't wait to see what happens in the market when we get there, man. Right? <laughs> That'll be Teddy, fun. I appreciate the conversation, man. As always, Thanks, we Tommy. look forward to talking to you next week. Absolutely. See you next week. Have a good one. Have a great one, man. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs a lot live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year, or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested, or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got all the markets in the red, but catching a little bit of a bid. S&P's right now negative by nine points. Jumping over to Coinbase. Coinbase with their numbers last night disappointing a little bit. Trading lower to 302 from a price point of 360. You're down 9.3% on their numbers. Uh, jumping over to their numbers real quick. 
Third quarter revenue misses analyst estimates in terms of what they came in with. How about a miss in this? 1.31 billion versus 1.57 billion. That is a staggering miss, folks, especially in the context of the way cryptos have traded over the last three months. You got Coinbase trading lower down to 302. You're down 9.1% on their numbers uh, this morning. What else we got going on, folks? One week from today, Mr. Larry Pesavento, he's going to be doing a live trading webinar, folks. A five-hour webinar from 9 a.m. till 2 p.m. Eastern time. Larry, he's got his charts all figured out, folks. He's in the Tiger's Den already. He's posting them. His program's coming up at noon Eastern time today. And he'll be doing that webinar one week from today. When you sign up for this webinar, folks, it's $295. You gain a month of his Fibonacci 24-7 trading service. That's a $97 value. That begins immediately. I encourage you, if you're thinking about going, sign up for the webinar. You'll get his newsletter for a week leading up to that webinar. You'll be in there a week from today, November 17th. What we also do is that we've uh, given free entry to anybody that paid for his previous live trading webinar. In August, they're going to gain access to this, so we're going to have a bunch of good traders in the room they'll be asking questions uh it'll be a great experience i'm looking forward to it myself i always try and be in those rooms when i can when they're going on outside of my program one week from today folks check it out on the front page of tfnn.com and that full five-hour archive uh webinar will be archived uh, if you can't be in front of that screen for the full five hours, that'll be archived. Watch it as many times as you'd like on the front page, uh, on your account page at TFNN. All right, we'll finish it off with, uh, speaking of a firm, Mr. Kevin Hinks, uh, the firm Zilch. Yeah, how about a $2 billion valuation, the buy now, pay later deal? It's, uh, folks, be careful when you're buying now, paying later, because many times, uh, much better to buy now, pay now if you can, as opposed to paying those finance costs. All right, folks, we got the Dow in positive territory. We got the Russell in positive territory. We got the S&Ps negative by just six points. We got our man Basil Chapman live up next, folks. Fast Market, Larry Pesavento at 11. We'll be right back, folks. Stay tuned.